After all that reading and all that setup and boot, let's learn about Illustrator. So if we're gonna learn about Illustrator, we need to open it. If you notice, my screen is gonna be somewhat similar to yours in that I don't have the dock, right? I set up the lab and my computer so that the dock is at the bottom. If you move your mouse down, the dock's gonna pop up and that's where application, common application icons are. However, as a designer, you want as much screen space as possible when you're creating design. So I keep that hidden and I work smarter. How do I work smarter? I use spotlight search on a Mac. So command, which is to the left of the space bar, command and space, and then I start typing Illustrator. And you will see, as you type the name of the program, you're gonna get top hits. And here, highlight is Adobe Illustrator. I'm gonna hit return, and that is going to open it up. So you spotlight search. If you wanted, there is launch pad, and you can, and you'll probably have the icons down here, but work smarter. Use the keyboard shortcuts, command space to spotlight search. When Illustrator does open, you get this start page, okay, or start menu. And you can see you might have a list of recent files that you've created and saved. You can create a new file or open an existing file. And right here on the right is a keyboard shortcut combination. That little symbol next to the end, that means command. So a new document is command N. To open an existing document is command O. So we wanna use keyboard shortcut, so command N for a new document. And brand new to Illustrator CC 2017 is this new and improved new document window. You will probably not have recent items here. I've been doing some other stuff, so I have a couple recent items. Yours will be blank, don't worry about it. But as you create artwork and work on projects, you're gonna see the recent items that you've been working on or recent types of documents right there. And then along the top, you also have some pre-made frequently used categories of documents or document types. There's mobile, which is some preset sizes for working on mobile devices like iPhones, iPads, and Androids. One thing you'll notice is these measurements are in PX, which is pixels. So mobile and web is pixels. Okay, that's one thing you might wanna know. Here you can see the web tab, and these are default sizes for web pages, again, measured in pixels. You also have print, and print means obviously to print something out, but in this instance, it means for professional printers. And professional printers are very different from even the big printer we have in the classroom. They use, if you look down here in color mode, they use CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And the mixture of those four colors in different percentages gives you every other color available. All right, CMYK. However, the printers you have at home, the printers that are in offices, the printers we have at school, they use what's called RGB color, which is a combination of red, green, and blue. Our screens are RGB. A combination of red, green, and blue light gives us all the other colors. Another thing is if you looked at the web documents, if I click on web, they were in pixels. Print by default is in points. Points and picas are very, very common in professional print. But I think it'd be a little too confusing for this level class, so we're gonna focus on inches, all right? Inches. But understand points and picas are for professional print. Film and video, standard sizes for different screens, right? 4K, 1080, stuff like that. Most of the time when we start a new document, we're gonna to come to art and illustration. And the reason why we're doing that is art and illustration is kind of a blend of print. Well, it's print for the type of printers we have. So about the only difference is, because it's still default as points, is that it says RGB color mode, and that's what we always want to work in. 
It's still in points, so we can fix that, but I want you to click on letter. We're gonna create letter size. And you see these numbers, they don't make much sense, so we want to switch from points to inches. And 11 by eight and a half, that's a letter document. That is the standard size piece of paper like you print your essays on. You have a couple other things here. You have orientation. This means tall and skinny, right? Typically like your essays, right? So eight and a half inches wide, 11 inches high. Or you have portrait, which is short and wide. If you spin the paper. Okay, doesn't matter which one for this activity that you pick. I'm gonna go with orientation, eight and a half by 11. Don't worry about bleed. We'll talk about this in some future projects, but you want this inches, eight and a half by 11, RGB color mode and click create. And that's gonna create us a brand new document. This is an artboard, all right? And then this is scratch space around the outside. You can put stuff here temporarily, but only stuff that is on the artboard, only stuff that is in the white area will show up when the document is saved, put on the website, uh, put on the web, printed out, stuff like that. But you can put scratch work or temporary work on the gray area, and then the white part is artboard. One last thing in this tutorial is that might look like a white background, but technically what that assumes is that is paper. All right, so technically it's white just because we're used to paper being white and it's a great color to work on for designing, but really that means paper. So if this were to print out, it would be whatever color paper you put into the printer. Subtle difference, but something to be aware of that this white background, you assume it's paper, white's just nicer to design on.